Hello, my friends. I actually did my hair today to film. It's not, oh. It's because I started filming. Anyways, I finally did my hair for a video. Normally I just let it do its own thing. The last time I did my hair, I also crimped it, but it had a huge kink in it because I had it in a claw clip all day. So this was the only way to style it. I'm also wearing a new shirt from ASOS and I got a huge, huge, I mean like for me it was big, ASOS order. I also ordered from, or not ordered, but I went to H&M and I bought a couple things and I also bought a couple things at Target clothing wise. So, so if you'd be into like a clothing haul or a clothing try on video, let me know. I can do it on Instagram, TikTok here, wherever you want. I just figured I would offer it to you. What are we doing today? Today we are gonna do Books and Beauty episode two, but we are gonna do it on Jodi Pico. My sweet, sweet baby Jodi Pico. Uh, she's my favorite author of all time. And I'm going to, I can't go through every book I've read by her because it's too many. And I'll tell you how many in a second. So we're just gonna do my top five and I'm gonna explain like the plot line a little bit and then maybe just like her as an author because I feel like with these books, I read them so long ago, I can't give you like detailed storyline information um, like about the twists and all that because I don't really remember. I haven't read one of her books in almost two years but I do have her new one that I need to start as well. So I'll do like a follow up books and beauty on that at some point. But I just want to get into that. Um, if you're new here, hi, my name is Caitlin, and please subscribe to me if you haven't already. I think that I am moderately entertaining and moderately decent at doing my makeup. I also like books, which is why I'm talking about them. It's I figured let's mix the two things that I like: reading, makeup, boom, books and beauty. Like and comment down below if you want to see more of these, and let's get started. Okay, so super fast, I just wanna like recap some products that, or talk about some products that I'm gonna use in this video because I haven't talked about them on YouTube, I don't think. Lately, I've been doing a lot of my newer purchases over on my Instagram for my Makeup Mondays. So if you don't follow me over on Instagram, I highly would recommend it because you get to see more content and more videos every week. I definitely haven't talked about this on my channel, so this will be the concealer I will be using today. It is the NYX Bear With Me Concealer. I've been testing that out as well. And then I'm going to be using the Too Faced Gingerbread Extra Spicy palette on my channel today. If you do not follow me on TikTok, then you will not know that I am doing a little series over there where I have a pop, a whole jar full of popsicle sticks. You can see it right here, right there. That's my popsicle stick jar. There's one popsicle stick for every eyeshadow palette I own. And so I pick one out and I do a look with that, whether it be like some random thing or whatever. And this week, the week that I'm filming this, this was the palette that I picked and I only was able to use shades that started with a letter in my name. So I was very limited. There were only three shades and that's because I did Caitlyn Jolene. If I only did Caitlyn, I had two shades. Uh, so today I wanna dip into some shades that I haven't touched yet because this is a palette that, although I will never get rid of, if you haven't seen my eyeshadow palette video, because, or tag video I should say, because my daughter picked it out for me, but I also just, I have it in this cabinet and I don't pay attention to it. So. Since we used it this week on TikTok, let's do it again and do another look with it right here, right now. Anyways, let me get some base going and then we can chat about Jodi. It's a big old pair on me. So I put my primers on real quick because those are pretty boring. <laughs> you don't really see much and now I'm doing my foundation. And I figured let's get onto the topic of Jodi Pico as an author in general. Uh, if you do not know Jodi Pico, she is an amazing author based out of New Hampshire. And she's actually from Hanover, New Hampshire, or close to, she lives in like a village outside of Hanover, Hanover, New Hampshire. So growing up, that was obviously a reason that I really enjoyed her. Very well known author, living in the same state. So therefore, a lot of her stories were also based in New Hampshire. So she does write about the area that I grew up in, so I do enjoy that. But also just in the way that she writes. So she is, and I, I don't even want to put her in, like she's not a romance writer. She's a nonfiction writer for sure. Just nonfiction as a broad term because her book topics are vastly different between them each. And she does so much research for all of them. And that's what makes it, 
I think them so amazing, okay? So for example, there's a book called Leaving Time where she talked about an elephant sanctuary. So she went and she visited an elephant sanctuary for an extended period of time to understand how to write the book accurately. She did a book about a wolf sanctuary and she went and stayed at a wolf sanctuary. Like these things are insane to me. She just puts so much time and energy into her books and just wants to make sure that they are right, they are accurate, they are representing things, people, topics in an accurate way. And I think that is because she writes about very controversial or hot button topics, if you will. <clears throat> she also very often will have court cases in her books, which is something that also was really exciting to me. For some reason, reading her court cases was so amazing. I honestly considered becoming a lawyer only because of how amazing her writing was in the court cases. Like, yeah, I get it. Her books aren't gonna be like 100% accurate to like being in a courtroom, but like, holy shit, did it give me so much like motivation and excitement. I know I look psychotic right now to be having this conversation with you. It gave me so much motivation and excitement and like confidence and just like this like burst of energy whenever I would read the lawyer's like opening argument or a statement, closing statement, like, God, it was so, the, her books are just magical. And the other thing that makes her writing some of my favorite of all time is the multiple perspectives. So she typically will have anywhere from like three to four to maybe five, two to, two to five maybe, I'm not really sure of the average, but that's gonna be my guess, maybe two to four at most. Um, characters that are gonna be having different perspectives throughout the book itself. So you're gonna bounce back and forth between people a lot. And I know I mentioned that in my Colleen Hoover video because that is something that I really enjoyed about her book as well, Regretting You specifically. And it was really, really, really what got me into reading is her style of writing and how she does that. She also changes fonts for people, which is actually super cool. It gives you like a way to decipher who you're talking to and looking at and all that. And so that was really great. But all in all, I think Jodi Pico is an amazing writer. Okay. If you have not read a Jodi Pico book, I think you are doing yourself a disservice. She has a little bit of something for everyone. Okay. I mean that with the least amount of bias as possible because her topics are so vast. Like out of my top five, six with the honorable mention, they all are a hundred percent different. They don't even have similar characteristics. Actually, I think there is a couple books that she has where characters, um, you see another character, like a, you see a character again, which is really great. I do find that interesting that you're getting to see a character more than once in her stories. It's kind of fun, but all in all, okay, we're going to give you a number that's going to be shocking. Hold on to your seats, people. I have read a total of, drum roll please, if I can figure out how to edit a drum roll in, that's what I'll be doing right now while I place this on my eye. Everything's fine. This is a really long drum roll, Caitlin. Why is it still going? This seems so ridiculous. Please stop. 17 books of hers, okay? That's a lot of books. <laughs> I just wanna show you my Jodi Pico collection that I have, okay? I've read 17 books. I don't have all 17 with me. Some of them were Kindle, some of them were my mom's. I was only able to steal a few of these from my mother. And if she's watching this, you know I have them, but don't be upset with me, okay? So all of the hardcover books are books that I bought pre-order or pre-sale. And all of the paperback books are books that I think my mom just like had purchased at some point. But, oh my God. <laughs> this is just at my house right now. And this is gonna be a phenomenal thumbnail when my makeup's done, okay? Um, the first book I ever read by her was The Pact. And that is a book about a suicide pact that these two kids have. And one kid goes through with it and the other one doesn't. They're like teenagers in high school or something. And the book is about like, the girl essentially goes to court to say like it's her fault, that, this, that she should be like held liable for the suicide pact or whatever, the boy who decided to commit, or the girl, I don't remember. One of the characters decides to commit suicide, the other one doesn't fall through with the pact, and so like the parents are suing the other person, essentially. 
so that was the first book I read by her and it was amazing. And it got me right into Jodi Pico, like dive head first right in. So I'm gonna go from bottom up, starting with my honorable mention and ending on the first, the number one book in my opinion, because I feel like that's just the proper way to do it. You don't wanna start with the best and end with the worst, right? Like that's just silly. So my honorable mention book is Lone Wolf, which is the Wolf Sanctuary book that I mentioned. However, the underlying storyline or the main storyline, I guess the Wolf Sanctuary is an underlying storyline. The main storyline is this son, and I think he has two other siblings, if not at least one other one, but him and his dad did not have a very great relationship. They had a falling out and they hadn't spoken in years. And then he gets a call that his dad is on life support and he needs to make a decision or at least help make a decision about what to do. And the guilt and the desire to continue to work on his health so he can get like another chance to talk to him or another chance to just get to say things that he feels like he wished he had said and apologize and you know, those kind of things. So that is like the main storyline of the book. And then the wolf sanctuary is just like his dad lived on one and owns a bunch of wolves. The reason that that book was so important to me was because of the timing of it. This book came out the year that my grandfather passed away. My grandfather had a stroke. He was on life support in the ICU and my dad and his two other siblings had to make a decision about what to do and when to do it and all that jazz, what, what the solution was. My dad didn't have a great relationship with my grandfather and he felt like there was a lot of things that he didn't get to say to his dad because they hadn't spoken in years. And then he heard with a phone call from a sister that his dad was in the hospital and might not pull through. So at the time of reading this book, it was super personal to me. It felt really real. And to be honest, her writing is really real anyways. It hit home in such a phenomenal way. And I remember reading this on my Kindle and I know that I saved a bunch of the quotes into my Kindle, like highlighted them so I could have them later. And what that is one thing with Jodi Pico is like the nuggets or the of like wisdom or the little heartfelt, like beautiful quotes and wording that she has, like it's memorable. Like you hold your book open and take a picture of the quote and save it in your phone, kind of memorable. That is my honorable mention. I don't consider it one of my top books, so I can't say it's like on the top five, but I figured that one was just important to mention because the timing was crazy. It was exactly what was going on in my life. And it also was just so real. Um, I don't think that one had a court case in it, if I remember correctly, but I can't give you with 100% certainty. So then we are going to talk about my fifth book, book number five in my top five Jodi Pico books. Uh, this one will have to go to. And if you have not heard of this book, I think you've been living under a rock, uh, My Sister's Keeper. So if you didn't know, My Sister's Keeper with Cameron Diaz was a Jodi Pico book. And let me tell you, the book and the movie are not the same. And coming from someone who read the book first, the movie made me very angry. Essentially the storyline, if you haven't seen the movie or read the book, is that there are two sisters, one has cancer and the other is just a little girl living her life. And her parents find out that the sister is a donor or a match to be a donor to her sister to keep her alive. And the little girl decides, I think she's like 12. I don't know how little she is, but she's not an adult. She decides to sue her parents essentially because she doesn't want to donate the organ. And her parents are like, what are you talking about? Like, it's your sister, like she'll die without it. And she's like, I just don't want to. Like, I, I want to live my life. Like my whole life has been shadowed by my sister's sickness and all that. And it's like, I just, I, I want to do what I want to do. And it's not that. And so she has a lawyer, they go to court, they do all this thing. The twist at the end is fucking insanity and it's not as easy and simple as the fucking movie made it. So if you liked the movie, I guarantee you, you'll like the book 10 times more. It also is in multiple perspectives again. So that's super helpful. Um, I think it's the mom, the daughter and the lawyer. I don't remember, but I think that's how it goes. So if, that sounds interesting to you, I highly recommend it. It is essentially just like, you know, a lot about childhood cancer and 
family dynamics and like how that affects the other members of the family and like what that means for them and the trauma that they hold and the experiences that are potentially sacrificed in order to take care of the sibling, which like obviously understandable, but at the same time, like everyone has their own story kind of thing. So I thought that book was amazing. I also wrote down when these books were released and that one was released in 2004. I remember leaning over in the bus, in the bus back from a field trip on the way to a field trip, just like my head on the bus seat, just like cr like finishing the books. I couldn't put it down. I was real, real fun on the bus rides. You're welcome to all my friends. I'm pretty sure I know exactly who was sitting with me. And if she remembers, then hi, sweet love. So yeah, that book was amazing. I just, I think the movie did it a disservice. And if it ends with us is as straying from the plot as my sister's keeper was, then we might have some issues on our hands, okay? Can't ruin that for us, I swear. I've never been more mad at a book adaptation than my sister's keeper ever okay amazing book so number five in my top five and to be honest i mean she's written a new book every year since 2004 and that's still in my top five there's also a million and one other amazing books some of the topics i'll just go on a quick rant like there's a book about amish people there's a book about like the salem witch trials and people being like wiccans and witches there's a book about um these are books that i'm not talking about so i'm not trying to give away a lot of the plot lines but like 10 circles about a girl like running off to like live in Alaska or something and be like a snow dog girl. Um, Songs of a Humpback Whale, I think is like a mother daughter escaping a abusive situation, but I might be wrong. And then there's also like Handle with Care, which is like a really fragile, sick little girl who's like donor match is somebody on death row and like the morality behind like taking a donation from a person who is on death row and also like the death sentence and like how that makes people feel. Um, there's a book about a little boy who was sexually assaulted and he is, his parents are going to court to like solve that problem. There's a book about a little boy with Asperger's who's helping, he's like a suspect in a murder or something and he's helping solve the murder. That book is also super good. And so is the one with like the heart transplant. I think that's actually called Change of Heart, not Handle with Care. I don't remember what Handle with Care is about. But yeah, so just, there's a lot of topics and a lot of things. Like things are really vastly different. And she does a lot of research, so they're great. So number four is a book that was written in 1996. Mind you, I was born in 1995. So this book is 28 years old. And, oh, nope, that's bad math, one year ahead. So it was, it's 26 years old. And it's really good. I don't know if I read it now, if I would like be as into it for some reason. Like maybe it wouldn't be as good, but from what I remember, it was beautiful. And I'm not a crier when it comes to books. And I'm pretty sure in my memory, I can remember tearing up reading this book. Um, essentially it is about like dignified death or assisted suicide kind of thing where it's like, there's this elderly woman or an older woman. I don't remember if she's elderly, but I feel like she was. And she has a terminal illness and she wants to choose how she dies and she doesn't want to like suffer and be in pain. So she asks her husband to help her die in a dignified way. And they go on like this big road trip across the country to like get her to the place. Like there's a place, one particular place in like one of the states that they just like try to go get to. And I believe there's also a court case of some kind because it is illegal. So like they got in trouble for it essentially and all that. Um, so that's what I remember. I just remember that the book was, did I say it was called Mercy? <laughs> I just remember the book was like so heart wrenching and like the love you could feel between the characters was beautiful. And like the situation was so awful. And like, I don't want to get into too many politics here, but I honestly think that if someone's able to make that decision for themselves and they want to choose how they die and they don't want to suffer and be in pain, then like, who are we to tell them that they have to, you know? I just remember that book being super good. The cover, the new cover is different. Also, that's one thing. All the covers on her books change all the time. I don't know what that is. I don't know how that works, but like, why? I don't know. I don't like it. I wish they didn't change all the time. Um, but the cover at the time was like this big red rose. And I just remember reading that. Now that I'm saying that I'm picturing it like in my dad's truck, maybe I was reading it in the truck, probably. I mean, 
You can tell I like to read moving vehicles and really anytime I physically can. Before we get into the top three, I'm gonna do some bronzer, my blush, and then we're gonna come back. We're gonna start the eyes while we talk about the top three. <clears throat> uh, in this Too Faced Extra Spicy, nope, Gingerbread Extra Spicy, I'm gonna dip into the pink shades. So we have Soft and Sweet, we have Cinnamon, Cinnamon, um, and Hot Tamale. And then I think either cookie cutter or like the spoon will probably ooh, maybe drizzle it. Drizzle it's kind of cute. It's like this deeper pink. That one might be more fun. Anyways, I'm just going to start messing around and doing my eyeshadow. I'm not going to like really explain it since we're going to be talking about books, but I just wanted to let you know what shades we're going to be using in the palette. They're light, pinky, warm tones. So um, I bet ColourPop Smoke and Roses could probably make a super similar look if the you have the Too Faced in Bloom. Not Too Faced, tart, <laughs> Tartlet in Bloom. It might do the same thing. Um, any pinky palette will do it. My number three book out of all the books, we're gonna start getting into books I physically have now so I can hold them up for you. My third favorite book out of the 17 that I have read of Jodi Pico is Small Great Things. So Small Great Things is insane, okay? Ruth is a labor and delivery nurse and she is black, okay? Mind you, this book was written in, um, 2016 so way before blm and the like true black lives matter like black rights or human rights kind of thing she was writing this book about ruth who is a black labor and delivery nurse um she's on a shift and she goes to talk to somebody who just got admitted into the floor and they're about to have their baby turns out they are white supremacists and they don't want her to work with them. They tell her they don't want her to be their nurse. They do not want a black woman delivering their white baby. And she is removed from that patient and gets given a different one and great. Baby's born, having a grand old time. Uh, he goes to get taken to do some sort of testing. She is alone in the room with him. Mind you, on the chart, it is saying something about how she cannot touch the baby, cannot help with the baby, cannot anything, okay? She knows that, the manager told her. This baby, their heart stops. And she freezes, cause she's like, if I perform CPR, I will get sued or fired. If I don't perform CPR, this baby will die. So she hesitates for an instant somebody jumps in because all the alarms are going off and they're like, what are you doing? And they force her to like do it um, and to react. So then the white supremacists are mad that she didn't react immediately and save their baby. And so she goes to court, she's getting sued um, and it goes back and forth between the viewpoints. So it's like the wife, the lawyer, cause the lawyer is white too. So it's like this big thing where she's like, oh, like, this white lawyer doesn't understand my struggles and like the lawyer has to go through a lot of um, learning when it comes to the, you know, white privilege and all that stuff that they that we experience as white individuals. And it was a really good book. It just really hit like a nerve because I feel like I wouldn't know what to do in that circumstance because there's no winning. She could have touched the baby and gotten sued. She didn't touch the baby fast enough, she got sued. Um, also the idea that there are still people out there who are white supremacists and don't believe in black rights or equality or any of that is just baffling to me and obviously we've experienced that way more in the last two years than we have any other time before and you know since 2020 that was really escalated and so i think if you haven't read small great things and you are a big fan or at least a supporter fans are the worst word to use if you're a supporter of the black lives matter movement and what it stands for then i would highly recommend this book because it really dives into it it goes into a lot of like the stereotypes that she experiences because she's a wealthy black woman in with a son <clears throat> and she gets like you know her house like you know the door gets kicked in by the police and they go crazy and they like pin her to the ground and her son gets like in trouble just because he's black and like um i don't know it just it was a really great book and i think that it's it really shows a side to the 
I think it gives such a good description and like showcases the levels that people are willing to go to hurt black people that I truly think it gives a lot of insight. It can open your eyes. It can provide you with more of like a firsthand account, okay? Because if someone's just telling you something, <clears throat> you don't know what goes on behind closed doors. You don't, you know, it's their story, it's whatever. But this book is told through the lens of so many different people and you get to see like the interactions on the street and the police and like all this, like you get a lot of insight into how they're <laughs> wrongfully treated sometimes just based simply because their skin's different. So I would highly recommend Small and Great Things. I think it's an amazing book. I think the message is amazing. The learning that you can do as the reader in this particular book is amazing. Is amazing. I, I just, I find it rare that you were learning about minorities in books like this, unless it's written by a black author. And I know she's not, Jodi Pico's very white. And that might be off-putting to hear a black woman's story through a white woman. And I also understand that, but this was long before that like movement really happened. And I do think that she did it justice, at least in my white privileged opinion, I could be wrong. My second favorite, and the fact that I call this my second favorite is baffling because I think this book is 600 pages long. I lied, it's 460 pages long. I read it in, I think, two days. I remember I was in high school laying, was I in high school? When did it come out? 2013, I was in high school or freshly in college, I'm not sure. Um, depending on when in 2013 it came out. Uh, I'm laying on my couch in my mom's house and I am going to town reading this bad boy because I cannot put it down. It is the best book, mainly because of the topic, but I'll get into that. It is The Storyteller. And this book was signed by Jodi Pico for my 18th birthday. My mother sent it to her. She has like a PO box and if you send her a book, she'll sign it and send it back, which is amazing. Um, so she like wrote a little thing to me and I actually, if you don't, the book is about the Holocaust. And if you don't know me personally, um, I have always, it's so hard to word this, but the Holocaust is one of the only moments in history that I enjoy, no, that I can tolerate learning about. I do not like history. I think history is the worst. I do not like historical fiction. I do not like history. I failed my AP US history exam because I can't stand history, nor can I stand to pay attention to it because it's stupid and it sucks. So the Holocaust is a topic that I find fascinating, um, all the awful things that happened, all the things that people let happen, all the different like tiers of the Holocaust, like there's the medical testing, which I did an entire semester of a project in one of my honors courses in college. We were learning about like World War II time and uh, like we had to pick a topic to base Th like all three projects for the entire semester, all of our research, this huge paper, like all this stuff on this one topic. And I picked medical testing in, um, during the Holocaust because that was one of the few things that I hadn't really learned about yet. And I wanted to do something about the Holocaust that I wasn't already very knowledgeable on. Anyways, <clears throat> so I did a portrait using words only of a Holocaust survivor of, I think, I think it, it was the camp that started with a B and for some reason I can't think of it. Ber Birkin? Doesn't matter. I'm gonna insert a picture here. It's one of my finest works. I received a lot of awards in high school for this particular work. Um, the words on the portrait all pertain to the Holocaust. Suffer, um, intolerance, um, extermination, pain. And then there's one more word. I use five, but it's fine. That's all I can remember. Oh, it starts with an R. I remember writing it. I can't remember. Anyways, um, all using micron pens on paper. And then I also did like a black watercolor wash on the background. Anyways, so I sent, or sorry, my mom sent a photo, like a little five by seven of that artwork to her with the book because, you know, it's obviously a topic that I find interesting. And so she shared that with her. So in her little sentiment in the book, she was saying that I 
she thinks that I'm gonna go places and that I'm already so talented and whatever, and it was quite beautiful. Anyways, <laughs> books about the Holocaust. So there's this woman, I believe she's in New Hampshire again, which is amazing. That's why it's so interesting to me. Also, Small Great Things was based in Connecticut, in case you're wondering. This girl works at a bakery. She has some sort of scarring on her face. I don't remember why, but she's like super self-conscious about it. And it's like a big theme throughout the book, how self-conscious she is of the scar. But her grandmother was in the Holocaust. She was a survivor. And so it goes back and forth between the granddaughter's perspective. She's like an adult, she's not like a child, but her granddaughter's perspective in the present time, dealing with what she's dealing with and her grandmother's perspective during the Holocaust. The twist in this book is insane, but essentially this baker gets approached by a man who comes in often to buy stuff from her because she's an amazing baker and all that. And he admits to her that he was a, what is the word? Why can I think of it? He was a, not a leader soldier, a Nazi soldier. Sure. Let's call it that. He was a Nazi soldier in the Holocaust and worked at the camp that her grandmother was at and he essentially looks at her and says like i feel immense amounts of guilt for everything that i did and i want you to help me or to essentially kill me so she's grappling with like this like decision to do that for him and like giving him what he wants feels wrong but also like vengeful to like do it because of her grandmother but also like it would feel really good to like get rid of this person out of the world because it's so angering that they did these awful things and all that. Um, and then it goes through the story of the grandmother and how she ended up in the camps, how she ended up escaping the camps and all of that. And it also goes into how she had interactions with this particular person that you are hearing this girl communicate with. Coming from someone who's very, 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 very interested in learning any detail she can about the Holocaust. This was amazing. I could not put it down. The part, honestly, the parts where it was just her talking to the guy, I could have take it, take it or leave it. The parts where it was discussing everything that she had to go through in the fucking camps, holy shit. I just, I don't know what 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 it is about the Holocaust, but it's just like, I don't know. It's just a topic and a, and a portion of history that I can't even, I, like I know it happened, I know it's real, but I can't even imagine that kind of stuff happening. Like obviously it does, obviously it still does to an extent. I mean, it'll come out that we are doing something awful one of these days, but it's just insane to me. And it's just a topic that I cannot get enough of. Book is amazing. I went through it very quickly. The twist at the end, holy fuck, dude. Okay, intense, um, real good. Highly recommend the book, that is all. I'm gonna put this shimmer on my lid, but the book I'm about to talk about is <clears throat> by far, one of the best books I have ever read and I have read it twice. And I have, other than this book I'm about to tell you about, I have never read a book twice in my entire life. Okay, so that is something. You should understand how serious this is now. I'm just gonna finish up my eyes super fast since you saw most of it. I'm just gonna put mascara on and quickly throw on my brows. I'll do my lips. I'll tell you what the products are, but then we're just gonna talk about this last book while I'm not doing makeup because it requires my full undivided attention. So when I said I was gonna do my lips off camera, I lied. Okay, I lined them, but I wanna show you, cause I use this product on my Makeup Monday. This is a glossy lip stain from e.l.f. in the shade Pinkies Up. And I think it is absolutely cute and adorable. So we're gonna apply it on camera because I want you to see it. They are so easy to apply. They have more of that like liquefied cream lipstick feel rather than a lip gloss. <clears throat> um, I really enjoy these. I'd like to try a couple more colors, I think, because I do find them fun. Um, their taste is a little weird and it makes me feel weird when it's like 
when I taste it. I'm gonna set my face one more time real quick. I already did this earlier, you just didn't see it. Because I feel dry. So now I'm gonna look like a dewy mess, but we are going to go into my favorite Jodi Pico book of all time. And that is, <clears throat> no need for a drum roll, let's just get right to it. 19 Minutes by Jodi Pico. This book is the best book I have ever read. And I mean that in full seriousness, okay? It takes a lot for me to rate a book five stars on Goodreads. It takes a lot for me to read a book twice. This book I've read two times and it's rated five stars on Goodreads. If I had to give it a rating out of 10, it's a 10 out of 10. Like I'm not even being facetious. I'm not being sarcastic. This book is the best book I've ever read in my entire life. This book was written in 2007 and it is about a school shooting in a small town in New Hampshire. So these kids are in high school and the shooting itself lasts for 19 minutes. The perspectives you get throughout this book are the this daughter, the mom, I think, the police officer, and I think the lawyer. And then you also get to hear like the shooter or no, you also get the shooter. You get the daughter, the mom, the police officer, the shooter and the lawyer. I think it's at least four, maybe five perspectives throughout this entire book. It is absolutely amazing. Okay. It starts off with the shooting <clears throat> and then it goes into like the story behind the shooter and how he was bullied into the story behind the girl and what was going on in her personal life, the story and behind like the mom who I think is a, who's yeah. Cause she's a lawyer. Okay. That's where I'm getting that from. She's representing the school or at least I think she is. And then there's also like a romance love story like entangled in here because like the mom and the police officer are into each other at some point. And I just, this book, it's just the best book I've ever read. <laughs> and I don't know how else to explain that to you. The twists are insane. The, it's such an easy read. Like, yes, it's a heavy topic, but it doesn't feel heavy when you're reading it. I'm just like, admiring the book here. Um, it doesn't feel heavy when you're reading it. It truly is one of the most amazing books I've ever had in my hands. And if you have never read a Jodi Pico book and you don't know where to start, although it pains me to say, read the best book first, if you read 19 minutes, you will appreciate her genius. You will appreciate her writing. You will appreciate her storytelling. The way that she like obviously concocts these timelines and these storylines and the characters and how they all connect and how they all don't connect, but also like eventually they get back to each other. And it's insane. I believe the police officer in this book is also when I was talking about somebody appearing in um, multiple books, I believe it is a police officer from this book that does that in a different novel. And I don't know what one it is, but that's what I remember. I don't know what else to talk about without giving it away a lot, but there's like a lot of things that happen. There's an intense, wonderful court case that you get to get the opening statements, closing statements, like I mentioned earlier. Another thing like this talks about like the high school relationships and like how friendships turn into enemies, turn into like friendships, turn into love, turn into like uncomfortable situations and trigger warning. I mean, obviously school shooting, but it also briefly discusses relationship rape, if you will, and what that looks like and what that can cause. The twist itself, there's nothing else I can say. <clears throat> if my lack of words has not convinced you to read this, then I don't know if I should even be. Here. That is my top five books by Jodi Pico and well, including the honorable mention. Like I said, I've read 17 and I can honestly tell you with certainty that there is only like, I don't finish a book I don't like. There are other books that I haven't read like the Amish one or the Salem Witch Trial one. Uh, what else? There's a couple others, but I've read almost, I've read 17, you know, like I've read a lot. So <clears throat> if you want to know when I mentioned like the other books that I was talking about um, and their storylines, if any of those interested you, feel free to reach out to me and I can answer you, whether it's in the comments, whether it's a DM, whether it's a 
text if you know me. Um, I can tell you what the names of those are so you can at least have those on your reading list if you're curious. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Books and Beauty. I hope you enjoyed your time with me here and my passion for this author and what she has done for me as a reader because I would not be the reader I am today without her. I don't think I even would be a reader at all without her. She is the only author I used to read. And when I ran out of her books, I went through like a lull of not reading for a really long time until the next book came out and then no reading. And then the next book came out and then no reading. And just, I can attribute my passion for reading and stories and all, like that comes from her. And so Jodi Pico is the greatest author of all time, in my opinion. Do I think Colleen Hoover is getting up there now with all these amazing books? Of course. But if I didn't have Jodi Pico growing up, I wouldn't even have read Colleen Hoover for one second. So I love her. I think she's amazing. I love that she's from my home state, my favorite place. Um, if you haven't subscribed to me already, please do. I post a video every three, nope. I post a video every Friday at 3 p.m. Uh, please like and comment down below if you enjoyed this video and let me know what other authors you want me to review. I did do a poll recently where I had you decide like what you wanted me to do for the next Books and Beauty and Jodi Pico obviously won, but I had a bunch of other things. I had Emily Henry. I had um, like a psychological thriller, like Roundup of the most recent that I read. And then what was the other author? I had another author in there, but I can't remember. Doesn't matter. So if any of those interest you, let me know down below. As I mentioned at the beginning, I have a lot of clothes. If you want to see a clothing haul, let me know. If you want to follow me for my makeup Mondays, that is over on Instagram at Caitlin underscore makeup, which is also the name of my TikTok at Caitlin underscore makeup where I'm doing the popsicle stick challenge. All of those things are fun and exciting and great. So follow me everywhere. And on that note, it's 1057. I need to sleep. And I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your week, weekend, whatever. And hopefully I'll see you next week. Bye. I gotta put my whole bookcase back together because I took them all off, okay? That normally is, nope. That is normally full of books. This one normally has three more on it. <sighs> Jody, your works of art. They need to take up more space on my bookshelf, that is all. Thanks for watching. Oh, God. <laughs>